By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you more magic from the Frost Giant Cup in Hilversum, the Netherlands. And we have reached the semi-finals. And this is going to be a very exciting game between two Dutch veteran players. Players uh, you know very well if you've been playing old school for a while. On the left side it's Martin and we've seen him uh, in the previous match as well. He's still playing obviously his four color spice deck. So looking forward to see the deck in action again. And on the right we have Mari who is playing the deck. And maybe that name rings a bell because he's also the organizer of the Knights of Thorn, the biggest old school tournament in the Netherlands. And if you would like to know more about the Dutch old school scene, there is a link in the description below. That being said, let's quickly go to game number one. Game number one, and it's Martin on the left with the four color spice, and it's Maddie on the right with the, the deck. And let's see. I think these are going to be very close matches and very grindy matches, and I think both players will be in the tank a lot as well. It's one of those matches where there are a lot of instant spells, and there is a lot of there are a lot of control elements, obviously. Not just in the deck, but also in um, Martin's deck. And let's see, there's the opening with the Tundra and the Mox Sapphire. So that means that Mari can already counter. And there's a single factory from Martin passing the turn. There's a Lotus. Cracking the Lotus, <laughs> playing a Mind Twist. Yeah, these are the things, you know, um, that's, that, that can be really killing. Because what the deck wants to do is just get card advantage, advantage, that's what the deck is all about. And with that card advantage, they can like take complete control and slowly kill you. And that's an attack there with the Mox Jet and the extra factory hitting Mari here for 3 means he, he's going to 17. Passing turn out, not finding any land or he doesn't want to play it out. And there's a Felwer Stone. No response from Mari, it seems. And passing turn. Interesting, Martin deciding not to attack with the factory. Probably because of the Tundra that's untapped. And then you, then you have the possibility of a Swords to Plows here, of course. And it's hard for Martin, just with two cards in hand. And Mari looking, organizing his cards, playing a second City of Brass. And just passing the turn. And as you can see, this game already turned into quite a control game. Uh, because maybe the ambitions that Martin had to play the game quickly, to put some pressure on the deck player. That, that plan um, just flew out of the window with that uh, very early mind twist. And he's just drawing right now, passing turn, three cards in hand at the moment, and Mahdi still with a full grip of cards. Hasn't really done much, except for that Mind Twist. And there's a Soul Ring, passing turn again. And there's a Mox Pearl. And also just passing turn. Nice Dan Fraser Alters there, you can see his... Uh, Signature Dragon, which is pretty cool. And there's a tap for four. And there's an Urnum Jin, so the four or five powerhouse. I'm expecting a counter or a swords here, but who knows? Maybe he's lucky and he can deal some damage with it. And Maddie is not. Oh, he is responding. And there's a sword to Plows here, so that does mean four life. For Martin, but that's not really that um, important. And passing turn again. And this is kind of the game you can expect, and um, probably there will be a Jadem Tome coming from Maddie as well sooner or later. 
There is a tap for three, it seems. And there's a recall. Oh, and is he going to recall the twist? That would be brutal. And I'm playing the twist, emptying Martin's hand almost. And he's taking back the mind twist. It is, of course, the semi-final. And you want to play as brutal as you can play. And will Martin have a counter spell? He does have two blue thanks to the Felwer Stone. Oh, yes, Volcanic Islands, of course, as well. But he's passing turn for now, so not playing out the Mind Twist. Interesting. Doesn't want to tap out completely, I guess. And here we see an Urnum Jin. And probably a counter spell. Is taking a damage for it, though. And there's the counter spell. And this is going to be interesting, um, this matchup after sideboarding, since both players uh, play with uh, blue elemental blasts in their sideboard. I wonder if um, Madi is also playing with red elemental blasts. That I do not know. I mean, he could with the City of Brasses. And of, sorry, and of course the, uh, the Black Lotus. Looks like he's going to tap, so he's going to probably play his Mind Twist, and there is the Mind Twist, and that's just brutal, getting a double Mind Twist. Oh, there's a counter spell. good for you. Good for you, because getting a double Mind Twist in a game is just brutal, but oh, I spoke too soon. There is actually a Red Elemental Blast main board, and that's interesting, I didn't know that. And uh, and look, it, it proves to be a very good decision for Mati to play, play a Red Elemental Blast main board, obviously. Most top competitive decks play with blue power and play with a lot of them play with counter spells. So playing a red elemental blast makes sense. And in the meantime, uh, we see Mari playing a disenchant on the Mistress Factory. Martin trying to deal some damage here. And this is really difficult here now for uh, for Martin to get back from a double mind twist. And there's two damage dealt by the factory, so Mari's attacking. And there is a strip mine, and there is a attack. Will there be another disenchant? It looks like it. And remember, there is no mana burn in Swedish. So maybe you're wondering, hey, he's paying three, and he's only using two mana. Absolutely correct, but there's no mana burn in Swedish. So it doesn't have any consequences here for Mari. And uh, that's, of course, just a deck with all the control elements always having the answers. And that Red Elemental Blast, at least for me, was a nice surprise. And there is a Black Vice. I don't think that's really going to have an effect here. He's reading the card. Maybe thinking, is it really necessary? Ah, he's countering it nonetheless. Paying five here, and there is a Brain Geyser. Will there be a counter spell? And he's allowing it. And this is that, that card advantage game that you see with the deck. You play your mind twists, um, you know, you control the game, your brain geyser, your tomes, um, to get more cards than your opponent and get more answers and win the game, basically. And there is a Black Vice. Taking two damage here for the counter spell. So there is some, some concern here uh, that Mahdi has towards those Black Vices. Of course he has a full hand and that's what he wants to keep for the entire game. So that's probably why. Passing turn. Passing turn. So the turns are going quickly and there's not a lot happening here. And there is an Ancestral Recall. So he's drawing three cards. Drawing an extra ones, boom, for his turn, of course. So that's card number four. So he's got a full grip of cards again. And in theory, the Black Vices are a great weapon against these kind of kinds of decks because your opponent wants to keep a full hand and with the Black Vice, you're punishing him for it. Unfortunately, the deck has too many answers in the form of disenchants and counter spells for those um, Black Vices. So they're not really sticking to the table and paying a white here to animate one of the factories and I wonder what he's going to do 
Yeah, there's a copy artifact. So he's copying his factory. I'm probably attacking with it as well, and he can pump it up also, but there is the strip line activation. No, he's taking the damage. And that means he's getting four damage because of those two other factories now. So that's all of a sudden there's a 4-4 four, four slamming at you. And if you haven't seen uh, any other matches of the uh, Frost Giant Cup, I can really um, advise you to have a look at it because there are some pretty cool matches, especially in the in the top eight. Um, round one, we had a crazy matchup with a Eureka deck. Uh, I think it was round four where we saw a Cobalt deck uh, <laughs> crashing into a sort of the Aegis deck. Those were really, really epic battles and, uh, and great fun to watch. And in the meanwhile, we see a, a big factory attack. So all the factory workers are, are going at it. And there is a strip mine on the copy artifact. And there is a shatter on the other factory. But there is a counter spell. And that means four damage here for Martin. So he's, he's slowly going down in life totals. And um, ooh, there's a time walk. Will there be another counter spell? And actually, I don't think... Oh, he does have two blue mana open still. So he can still counter. Chooses not to. And Martin is just drawing another card in passing turn. And another attack for four. And there's a bolt on one of the um, factories. Will there be a counter spell? No counter spell. And there are quite a lot of counter spells already in Mari's deck. I see at least two. And of course, that red elemental blast is in there as well. And there's a swords in there. And he's going to keep keep attacking now. Like he just wants to finish it. And that makes sense. Still has a full grip of cards in this whole match. He's This whole first game, he's just had a full grip of cards. And look at that. Playing a disenchant probably doesn't want to discard any cards. And, uh, well, I guess it also makes sense because it's his only white source. And uh, attacking here with the factory. Playing a time walk. And that will allow him to do another two damage. And Martin is slowly dying to the factory. And there's a black vice. Will this black vice stick? That's the question. This is the third one that Martin has played out. It looks like he's going to counter and playing a mana drain this time. So that means he has one colorless mana extra. Uh, he could have used that actually to activate the factory. Dealing two more damage. And we at least we see some really nice jewelry on the side of Martin. And another attack. And look at that interesting uh, Felwer Stone, by the way, on the side of Mari. That's a pretty cool altar as well. And, oh, there's too much glare. This is unfortunate because I cannot see the card. He puts it in the middle of the table. And I guess we just have to guess what it is. This is pretty annoying. Is it a disenchant? No, it's not white mana. It's not a disenchant. Is it a shatter? Could be a shatter for two. Uh, it looks like it's an um, Hercules Recall. So he's playing a Hercules Recall, so that means that all the artifacts has to go back to his hand. And he's probably doing it at end step, so that means he has to discard some cards. So that's a nice little trick, and exactly, it is the Hercules Recall. That's pretty cool. It's one of those very diverse cards. And every time I see Urkel's Recall being used, I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should play with it. And there is a Tome. So there's a book pretty late in the game. I would have expected it to come out earlier. And of course, Mahdi is playing his Mishra's Factory again. 
but we see that Martin has also found a second Mishra's factory. So he's building a little factory um, factory army of his own here. And now we're going to see this. I mean, this is typical for the deck. End of turn, using the Tome to draw an extra card. You know, having everything under control and every time toming and taking an extra card. There's an underground sea. Tapping two here, two white, playing a Chaos Orb, and we're going to see a flip. So I'm just gonna put it in slow motion. And let's see if he can hit the factory. Yeah, he's picking a factory, that makes sense. It's really a factory war this game so far. The factories are dealing the damage and all the rest is being countered or sourced. Or in this case, actually the factories are being pretty mutilated as well with the, we've seen uh, We've now seen a Chaos Orb. There is a block, and will there be, hey, there's a Divine Offering. So uh, we've seen Shatters, Divine Offerings, Disenchants, uh, Swords, uh, we, and we haven't really seen, oh yeah, we saw a Strip Mine. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, game number one. It's uh, it's going to Mari, the, the deck player. And I think now it's going to be really interesting. What are they going to sideboard? And more importantly, what are you going to take out? I always find it very difficult. So um, let's give them some time to sideboard and then we'll see them in game number two. Game number two. So it's about to begin here and Martin on the play probably because he can choose and he has to win this one to stay in this match and uh, and continue to the, uh, to the finals of the... Uh, Tournament. Oh, look at that. It's a creepy altar there. Is that the Eye of Sorin? And pretty good opening here from uh, Maddie as well with the double mox. There's a very quick Surrendip and. or Urnum, sorry, and answered with a Swords to Plows here. So that means four life for Maddie. I wanted to say he cannot counter. Now, he still can't actually. He doesn't have a second blue mana. And, well, now he, he has enough mana, at least, with that Black Lotus. And I'm talking about the deck player, Mahdi, the player on the right. And let's see what's going to happen. Playing a Demonic Tutor, so that means he has one Black Floating. What is he going to look up? Will it be a Mind Twist, perhaps? Using that Black and then tapping four more. And there is the Mind Twist. And will there be a Counter Spell? There is a Shatter, and there is a Lightning Bolt, and there is a Recall. And that's interesting. Went very fast, but basically he played out all the instances he could play out, and that meant that the Mind Twist didn't have as much effect. And a Suchi on the board. And the deck player, Mahdi, was unable to counter it. So that's another attack. There's another Suchi. A lot of pressure on the board here. And they could be. Uh, this can be a big problem here for Mahdi. Because Martin is really... Wow, hitting him for 8 now. That means he's going to 5 life. And this is turning into a problem now. Needs to find a solution for those Suchis. A dust to dust would be wonderful right now. Attacking and that's game. Wow, this was really, really, really quick. Uh, that means it's 1-1 one, one, and that means we are going to game number three. Game number three, the decisive game here. 1-1. One, one. Anything can still happen. Martin on the left for Color Spice. Mani on the right. The deck. So let's see. And I think, I mean, if Martin can put early pressure on, I can definitely see chances here for him. But look at it start from Mahdi, playing an Ancestral Recall, drawing three cards. That's not what you want to see uh, when you're playing against him. And there is a quick shatter. And I believe he's put some shatters from the sideboard in his deck. We could already see that in a really quick game number two. And there is a City of Brass, means that he has counter spell capability online now. Um, but he's actually playing out a card, uh, taking a damage from the city, going to 19, playing a second piece of blue power, a time walk. 
and another city of brass and what is he going to do with his extra turn exactly probably nothing uh, holding his mana up to counter and look at that martin not finding any land at least it seems to be the case because he's not playing out anything and there is Mahdi building further extending his mana with a soul ring and there is a black vice and black vice can be very powerful against the deck and Mahdi is not doing anything against it and I believe he has seven enhances that would mean three damage so he's letting it go going to 16 and let's see what he can do drawing a card and taking a damage from city of brass again oh this is brutal playing a dust to dust and this is bad news for Mahdi I mean Martin this is a very well placed dust to dust and there's a lightning bolt went very quickly means that Mahdi is going to 12 and there's another tundra passing turn here there's another lightning bolt and, and <laughs> I mean Martin only has one mana but he's doing a lot of damage uh, there's finally his second land he's found it here two volcanic islands on the board and there is a tome and that's of course what you want as a deck player and there's another lightning bolt it's going to six life and there's a Hercules recall that means that Mahdi has to take back but he's playing a mana drain that does mean two more damage it means Mahdi is only on four life here it does have two extra mana now not doing anything with it interesting not activating the tome playing a time walk here from Martin can he find some more direct damage because that's basically what he wants to do right now with I believe Mahdi is only on four life but it looks like the deck player has kind of stabilized and Martin playing a Mishra's Factory and playing another creature so putting pressure on the board here with the Urnum and that's a quick sorts here means Martin gains 4 life is on 24 tap Soul Ring for 2 playing Fowler Stone and can Martin actually win this one playing a Suchi will there be a counter spell has two mana up and he's playing a swords pretty much the same thing means that Martin is going to 28 but that's not really relevant at the moment with the deck player on just four life but I mean the deck is a control deck so we all know playing against a control deck okay he was only on two life he was only on three life that that's not the same as winning and there is an attack and there's a strip mine interesting playing a recall taking back the strip mine I mean the the factory so that means that Manny will lose the strip mine but he's looking at his hand is he going to counter or maybe play a disenchant or a sorts tapping one white no tapping two what are you gonna do Marty and playing a disenchant so that factory is gone and of course I mean Marty has to because he's only in four life playing a planes and drawing a card from the tome and as long as he can keep his you know his card machine his card advantage going he'll find the answers he need to protect himself I mean Martin has played his three lightning bolts already maybe playing number four in his deck but he he's not playing chain lightnings as far as I know he is playing fi uh, fireball I believe I think it's a one-off I'm not a hundred percent sure and there Matty drawing another card and you can really see him stabilizing now getting more cards in hand and probably finding counter spells and there's a diamond valley by Martin he's a big diamond valley fan and yeah drawing another card and who's going to the finals 1-1 one, one.
I always find it tricky when you're on a low life total to kind of play out City of Brasses. Because it seems kind of risky. And there's a disenchant over the Black Vice. With Martin playing out the Black Vice, I mean... Obviously, Mahdi had to deal with it. Because if it could have stayed on the table, it would have been huge. And I'm really liking kind of the power that Black Vice can have when you're playing against the deck. Unfortunately, the deck has just too many answers for artifacts. But this idea of punishing your opponent for drawing a lot of cards using the Black Vice for that, I kind of like that instead of only using it in aggro decks. And there's that untap of the big book again. And at a certain point, you know, I mean, Mari has stabilized now, but with that li low life total, I think he needs to try to find ways to actually damage Martin as well. And there's that Mishra's factory on the side of Martin, of course, that winter factory that he can start and activate next turn, playing a second book here. I'm pretty sure Mari has a disenchant or swords in hand, attacking now with that winter factory and we see a tap here is it going to be a swords and there's a swords and there's that diamond valley trick so what martin is doing is saying i'm going to sack it to the diamond valley because then i also gain life and it's going to the graveyard and it's not removed from the game so that's a nice little trick And I must say, Diamond Valley is, is, is a really solid card. It's a really good card. Because life basically buys you time. So if you can gain some more life, in a lot of cases, it buys you a couple of extra turns. And let's see what the, the deck player, what Maddie is going to do now. There's that underground sea that he's kind of moving or not moving. So that's kind of indicating a Demonic Tutor, perhaps. But choosing to draw a card first. It is difficult because it looks like he has a lot of mana, but remember those City of Brasses hurt Mahdi and he's on a very life, a low life total, so he doesn't want to use his City of Brass anymore. And playing a Chaos Orb, probably going to use it. I was going to use it on the Diamond Valley. Interesting. I wanted to say on the Mishra's Factory. Using it on the Diamond Valley. And we couldn't really see it flip, but I assume it flipped fully. And that's a hit. So Diamond Valley is a goner. And he probably has an answer for Mishra's Factory, or else he would have orbed that one, I think. Actually, he doesn't. Interesting. And um, I see that he's on three now. So that means I made a little miscalculation somewhere. It doesn't really matter that much. He's on three life. And he's drawing an extra card now with the Tome. And it's interesting the choice to play Chaos Orb on the Diamond Valley. Obviously the Diamond Valley a very strong and annoying card to play against. But... I would have expected him to choose the factory, but knowing Mahdi and, you know, he's really a quality player. So I'm sure he has a his reasons. And there's a Demonic Tutor. And maybe he wanted to cast that earlier when he was kind of, you know, flipping those lands there, the underground sea and the plains. Looking for something. What is he going to look for? Re is it going to be removal for the factory? A disenchant or a swords. It's going to be interesting. And he's playing a Black Lotus. Cracking the Lotus. Oh, interesting. Playing a moat. Okay, that's of course a way as well. And that kind of sticks because you're playing against an opponent who's not playing with white. So that means he has no access to disenchants. Maybe to tranquility because he does have green. But uh, the moat is working for now, keeping that Mishra's Factory at bay. And you can kind of see that the deck player is feeling really cozy right now. The only problem that Mahdi has is his life total, which, which is pretty big, I guess, because if you're at zero, you lose. But 
He has he has his card advantage, his drawing machine. He has his moat, so he's really nice behind his drawbridge. And he's just drawing tons of cards. He has all the mana he needs, he can counter still. The only problem he, ha he has is his life total. And you see Martin now just passing turn. And the thing is he's now on three, so maybe what Martin wants to do is kind of set something up, like play two burn spells in a row to, to finish Mari off. But I'm sure Mari knows that as well. I mean, Martin, by the way, is, I believe, on 31 right now. So, the, the, he's not dead yet. And what can Mari do? Going through his hand. I mean, that hand looks really full. Tapping for drawing here. Tapping another, drawing his second card. Making his full hand even fuller. Does he have to discard? And yeah, he has to discard. Discarding a tome. Also discarding a red elemental blast. Interesting, because you would think that you maybe you want to use those against counter spells. Tapping the trop, and there's the ancestral recall. And what will Mari do? He kind of probably is thinking, do I want to counter this? Or I mean Remember, Martin also has a Library of Alexandria that maybe is coming online now because of the Ancestral Recall. Playing a Lightning Bolt. Is this the end of the game? There is a Counterspell. There's a Red Elemental Blast on that Counterspell. There's another Counterspell. And that's it. Okay, so Maddie's safe. Cracking the Lotus. And there is a Fireball. And this must be end game now. Only on three life. If he can counter, he's on one. Tapping, <laughs> okay, that's game, wow. Okay, so the four color spice deck is advancing thanks to Red Burn. Okay, well, very exciting third game here from a uh, tactical point of view, from a control game point of view, I guess you can say. Uh, for now, thank you for watching the semifinals of the Frost Giant Cup. And uh, the next update will be the finals of the Frost Giant Cup. And in that finals, we will have Martin playing with his four-color spice deck against Carl from Belgium playing with the deck. For now, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more old-school magic, you can check out the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. And if you'd like to support me and my channel, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. That helps a lot. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, spread the word, and just tell me what you think of these games. For now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.